So last year we launched our first product, which is called Wove Advisory, and that really is W O V W O V E okay. Wove. Yeah, the reason we call it Wove is it brings together a lot of disconnected technology, and really that's kind of an advisor workstation if you okay. think about it. Lets advisors sort of build portfolios, trade them, report on them, everything they need to service a client. Um, this year we launched three more products, oh so we've been busy. Uh, we launched Wove Data which is a cloud-based data aggregation service so that advisors can have access to all the data they need to service their clients across any custodian and any firm. We launched Wove Connect, which is a suite of APIs. Lots yep, of people okay. need to build through APIs, and so we've offered that. And then the third product is probably uh, the one I think people are most excited about, which is Wove Investor, which is an investor portal that can be configured to any firm's branding um, so that they can have their investors log into a really simple and easy to use experience. Wow. That's, that's fintech. A, See, that's what that's I do. That's fintech, man, yes, right exactly. there. Is that exactly. what you do? I think, well, I think what happened during the pandemic. You're not, you weren't going into your financial advisor. You weren't going into your commercial yeah, you're local just using branch. Your app, right? And so people were forced to get yeah. tech savvy. And sure. I think probably from the provider perspective, you guys were probably forced by the marketplace to make to up more our game. Up yeah. our game, make more investments. Absolutely. So what are you hearing from your advisors? What do they what do they really need? Do they want to empower their clients? Do they just want to be smarter when they're talking to their clients? Well, all of the above, all right? The above. Like, So they really want their clients to have a very easy to use experience. And today, um, just given the way the industry's grown up, they are usually having to ask their end investor to log into mul multiple accounts, one for financial planning, one for performance reporting, one for mm. trading. Nobody wants that anymore. So no one can remember that many no, passwords. No, I can't remember that yeah, many no. passwords. So Wove Investor brings all that together, and that's why I think people are super excited about that product. But you can't pull together a really great investor experience unless you have all the data pulled together. So Wove Data is also a really important product. So Wove Connect, Wove Advisory, Wove Data, Wove Investor, they all create a suite. And the way to think about it is kind of like the Microsoft suite. You know, you got your Outlook, you got your Teams, and they all work together. That's what we're doing here in Wealth. So when I log on to my Wealth Management site, yeah. and I can see my investments and yep, my yep, bank yep. accounts and my savings and my 401k, and then I see like what the planning is, that's all that stuff. Stuff, and, <laughs> and we're putting it all together for any firm, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of large firms have made those investments if you're working with, you know, like a uh, a large wirehouse or, or something like that. But these are um, independent, mostly independent uh, wealth advisors, and they don't have that kind of capital, right, right. Mm -hmm. to build something that end-to-end. -end. So we're doing it for them, and they can own it uh, fractionally uh, and not have to make that massive investment that the Bank of New York Mellon is making on their behalf. What's the business case for the investments that you get? So when you go to your CFO and ask for capital yeah. to make some of these investments, yep. What's the business case you make to your CFO? Yeah, so uh, it's pretty easy uh, to make the case for this platform because this helps our uh, Persian custody business. It helps our investment management business. It helps our wealth management business. And it helps our asset manager clients. So because Bank of New York Mellon runs across all of those different um, business lines, this pulls it all together, so it's I, I, I'm I'm the best dollar to spend because it's it's really lifting all all these different business lines across BNY, and that really was the reason that we've made the investment in this platform. So what else then do you work on? I mean, this sounds great. Yeah, You're done yeah, now, right? done and done. No, never done. So we'll be uh, driving forward uh, with a lot more, and I'll be back here on the stage next year with more releases on Wove. But I've, we've also been working on uh, strategy. So I took over the head of Pershing strategy uh, back in. November and what was really exciting is here we were able to release our new mission and our new vision and let me just quickly run through mm -hmm. it our new mission is to uh, help advisors help more people so we believe that there's not enough advisors in in the in the United States to serve all the clients that need service mm -hmm. so there's not many more people you know coming into the industry. So our job is to make the ones that are here more productive so that it can just help more people. So it's pretty simple. And then our new vision is to create the most connected and productive platform for the future of wealth. We really see a world now where everything has to be connected and that's the mission we're on. So well, why aren't more young people coming into the business? Because all I read about is the big macro story of all this wealth from the boomers has to be transferred yeah. and has to be managed. And trained. It seems like a 20, 30 year runway. It is. So it's, my number three offspring is going into that, uh, that part of the business. Congrats. Uh, 
why I've heard from a lot of your colleagues that that's a challenge, right? Yeah, it is a challenge. I think there's some structural challenges. A lot of part of this business is still very, um, you know, kind of commission-based, and, and, and young people want a, potentially a different kind of onboarding model. Um, but I also just think we have a bit of a PR problem. You know, people don't realize how mission-driven being a financial advisor is. You know, you really are helping families create mm -hmm. uh, a different future. And I think if we can sort of change the narrative a little bit, I mean, I hate to use that term, but it is a really noble ambition. And I think uh, a lot of kids um, don't see it that way. They sort of see it as, like, yucky Wall Street, yeah. but it's not that at all. Financial advice is really a community-based, heartfelt type of, of occupation. Especially if you're able to touch families and lives that aren't multi-millionaires, yeah, right? Yeah, like, that's the whole thing, right? Like, everybody's like, okay, cool. But the reason our help advisors help more people ambition is so strong is, you know, the more we can help advisors be more productive, the, the more sort of lower down the economic chain uh, they can go, and we can really, truly change lives. So I'm super passionate about it, and I think that, uh, you know, we're just going to keep working until we can get millions more. Internally, you know, change for such a large institution that's been around for hundreds of years, especially in the technology sense, can be really hard. Yeah. What kind of mandate do you feel like you were able to have and execute? Like, yeah, how, I mean, how on board is everybody with all the change? I feel so, so privileged because this has been a, you know, kind of top of the house embraced initiative, right? So our, our CEO, Robin Vince, uh, this is one of his, his key initiatives, our CFO, our whole executive uh, office and people are so supportive and what they love about this kind of fintech model that we've put together is uh, we're actually now going to start to adopt this whole model firm wide mm -hmm. and I think it's going to make the future of Bank, Bank of New York Mellon um, as, as bright as its past has been.